Hi everybody and welcome back. Um, today, just a slightly different video than, than, my, my, than my usual format, but I thought I would do a kind of quick studio sort of room tour um, of mostly about all the equipment I use. So a lot of you are asking me questions here, there and everywhere. What do I use to record with? What kind of camera equipment do I use? Um, I'm gonna be filming on my handheld camera, which I've got here. So the quality isn't gonna be quite as good as, as the quality that you're watching here. Um, I haven't quite decided on how I'm gonna show you how I kind of do everything yet but I don't know maybe I'll work that out as I go along but this is just I thought I'd take you through a kind of whistle stop tour if you like of the equipment that I use and if there's anything that you want to know in more depth then please do put them in the comments underneath this video um, and try and be specific as you can and then I'll see if I can do a video explaining that so I don't know if you guys want to know if you actually want to see me make up some backing tracks um, or you want to see me do some recordings for videos so videoing the video that kind of thing um but whatever just put it in the in the comments underneath and then i'll, I'll know what you want to see if you want to see anything at all that is so um yeah so i'm gonna stop now and then i'm gonna take you on to this camera and carry on recording and take you around my room Okay, so this is the room that I do all my videoing in and where I teach in as well. I know the room's not very big, but I mean, there's only me, which I normally sit in that nice big comfy there, that chair there, and there's only just a student. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of room for someone to sort of play a violin and everything and me to play the piano or, you know, sit there and teach them, whatever. So I've actually literally just finished uh, doing a recording for the hanging tree. I think by the time you see this video, the hanging tree will have gone out. So there's my violin tab and I just have that on a stand. The microphone that I was using for that is this one. Um, I'm just having a few issues with it at the moment because when I bought this, this is a, um, is that a heart? Uh, oh, there we go. It's a hammer. Um, and when I bought it, I didn't realize that it was actually mono. So I've had to <laughs> do quite a bit of fixing and use all of this cabling that comes all the way down here. Um, and then I've had to connect it to some phonos, which, which I've got in here, which I don't really like because then it actually obscures the screen. Um, and I don't even think that it still works in proper stereo anyway. So um, it does give me quite a nice clean sound for what I am using, but I don't know, overall I'm not quite impressed, but I do have some other things which I'll get to in a minute. So this is the camera that I'm using. So there we go, you can see me recording on there. This is a new camera. So this is the, this is a Canon EOS 70D. I did have a Canon 650D that I was filming on, but I was just having so much problem with the, I'm gonna get out of the way of the screen now. But I was having so much problem with the autofocus in that because they were kind of old DSLRs, they weren't really designed for autofocusing. So this new 70D is just great for autofocusing. So it focuses exactly like this camera would, so you can't see the, the, fo the focusing, but the other camera, it would sort of rack in and out. So, you know, as I'm moving my hand, closer and forward you can't really see it's sort of focusing kind of instantly so that's what I use um, this is the the piano that I teach on this is a Clavinova CLP 170 it's actually been discontinued for a very long time um, you'll have to excuse the letters that I've got on my keys I don't normally have them on there as standard but again today has been a filming I've been filming for the last uh, four hours but, um, yeah I have to do all the filming in in one day when I do the filming and I have to do so much of it I have to kind of set myself up for for a month or two just simply because my schedule doesn't allow me to kind of do videos on a daily basis well, several months ago I got one of these long arm extensions so trying to the new piano videos that some of you may have seen where you can see them sort of overhead believe me trying to sit at the piano and trying to get a camera directly overhead of a piano has been a total and utter nightmare i mean i had the i had the the tripod legs standing on about a dozen violin cases because i just couldn't get the camera high enough until i discovered one of these so this basically just kind of attaches itself onto the end of the tripod and then you put the camera on here and then you just sort of obviously I need to angle where I put the the actual tripod itself but then this can hang nicely over the piano this is pretty much my my desk where I do my working this is where I keep my my violin and my bow I love this stand it's just great because my violin is just there and I can get to it the microphone that I use on the violin I have it always plugged into my my fire studio my pre Sonus fire studio which I have connected um, to the back of the 
the iMac here. And then I have, this requires this microphone which I've got here is an Audio Technica, just a clip-on mic. And what I do is I put that there and that picks up the ambient sound of the violin. I specifically wanted this for recording because I didn't want a microphone that was attaching to the body of the violin because then I think you pick up a very deeper, darker, kind of vibrating sort of sound and I wanted the sound that almost the ear picked up. So that's that and that does obviously require um, phantom power because it is a condenser microphone. The other thing as well is that um, sometimes when I'm recording it does pick up the bloke down the road who's mowing his grass so <laughs> or it picks up planes going by so that's the only kind of sad unfortunate thing about it. Um, moving on to this, um, I've only just recently bought this and I'm a bit scared to use it at the moment. Um, I think I figured out how to use it but I bought one of these um, uh, contraptions, uh, whatever you call it, so this goes on, it's got a ball head so you can tilt it. This goes onto the bottom of that and then this slides into the camera. So basically um, what would happen is, this is a Zoom H5 recorder. So this is for picking up much, much better quality sound for when I do my live performances because you guys know that I always stand here for my live performances because you see that background and there's the camera. So instead of having the Rode microphone, which is gonna be more or less redundant, I'll be having this on top of that and these are awesome contraptions. Moving on, I use Studio One to do my recording in, and this is a song, this is my song, Love's Young Echo, that I recorded a few months back. I have KRK um, Rocket speakers, and before you go, before I go any further, um, I know some of you might be wanting to punch through the screen of your computers right now but I know I don't have the best studio set up I know that my speakers are not in the right place um, and all that kind of thing but you know they are on little foam pads and things and they are away from the wall as much as they can but to be honest I don't have any other options so you know for, at the moment for what I do this is absolutely great and it works fine for me so studio one these are all the tracks that I lay down if I can if I just play a little bit to you So it does give me a nice clear sound. I'll just turn that down a second. So these, uh, I always colour code everything, just you know what's going on there, don't you? But all the red is all the violin tracks that you can see here. And then I just build it up sort of bit by bit. I, I think I started off by playing the piano track in here, recorded that, looped whatever it was that I needed to, to loop in for the particular parts. Um, and then once I'd got the structure of the song, I just added in a few other things like um, like the strings. You can hear the strings. And then you added in a little bit of the harp. I don't know if you can hear that loud enough, but... So then you just, I've just gone around and sort of added in tracks. So what I tend to do is just lay, I laid down the piano track with the chord structure I wanted. Um, and then I think I went in and added some, some drums and then added on the drums and that kind of thing. Um, and then I just went in and added some strings in harmony. And that's when I found some other, uh, you know, some other little parts. And when I'd pretty much done everything I thought I needed to do, I recorded in my violin track, which is generally these two, the lighter two tracks here, because I like to sort of cut in and out. So I'll record the first part, I'll stop, then I'll record the second part, I'll stop, and then the next part again. So this is all one continuous violin track. And then after I've done that, I add in some harmony parts. Then when I've done that, I just kind of go away for two weeks, come back again and see how it all sounds and if I want to add anything else in there. And then I kind of start the, uh, kind of laborious event of trying to mix everything, which is not what I'm best at doing. I like doing the recording and I can do the composing, but mixing is something that I'm not good at, but I'm learning and I'm reading and you know, I'm, I'm trying and I'm, I'm listening and all that kind of thing. So, so what I'll do is I'll set everything to zero. All of these tracks here, they're all set at, uh, where are we? They're all set at different levels. So this is 1.9, so if I move the fader up and then I'll play it and then I'll just sort of start to sort of fiddle around with the drums first and then each part as it goes, seeing how loud I want it. 
and kind of it's the hard part is to try and get started so that's the recording um i just i love studio one because i love the workflow um i know some of you have used pro logic um and what's the other one there's, there's another one as well that some of you use but i mean they're all just as good as each other but like i said i just like the workflow this is just the one i was introduced to and i just really like the workflow in this so that's that and then the video editing i use a final cut pro now i'm sorry that i don't actually have anything i don't generally do the editing here i do the editing all on my macbook pro but i don't actually have anything so much here but i like final cut pro because you can do lots of different um you can do lots of different things with it here and uh you know you can put lots of filters on and you can make some really really professional films if you've got the right obviously the right footage but there's enough here to make as good a films as I need to for what I do so you just input the footage here I've made something I don't even know what I've got here into a project um, nothing I think I was doing a test on a microphone I think a while ago so I don't have anything exciting here to show you but there we go if any of you want to see more specifically how I do something just let me know in the comments below or if you have any questions I'll try and answer you thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video